Going no, I'm just wondering if that is going to be the tipping point because we've given you extreme examples. What if it's something as mundane as... I highly as doubt that I'd go to Mars and become a customer service rep. Welcome to the Beacon House Podcast, recorded live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Beacon House Podcast. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining us. I'm Spencer McCoy. I'm Casey. Hunter. All right. And uh, what are we talking about today, guys? What are, we, what are we getting into? I would love to talk to you guys about the Falcon Heavy launch. You sound like you're selling something. Uh, no. Is that the, I'm selling how excited I am and was to watch this thing live. The Elon Musk space shuttle thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's space shuttle that they brought back landed and is still partially reusable. Okay, okay. So most of the time they send rockets up, NASA does. <clears throat> they break off, they, break they go apart. to space, they go into the ocean. Elon Musk, I mean, he's been doing it for a while now, but this is the biggest one he's done yet. And he right. landed it, it went up, dropped the payload off, which was, I mean, I think everybody knows about that. It was one of his Roadsters, Red Roadster, you know, Tesla Roadster, the yeah. convertible, had a dummy in it that had a spacesuit, one of his... Um, I guess would be prototype for a spacesuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this is prototype spacesuit had, you know, don't panic on the board. <laughs> There's a chip in the car that said made by humans from earth. Right. Which it's kind of scary if you think about it. Well, but, we'll get into that. I have an opinion about that, but, but keep going. So they launch it off, goes off without a hitch and then they come back and let me look this up because they landed two rockets simultaneously side by side on the pad, which is a great, I mean, it's, it's excellent for us in the future to be able to hop on something, go up, orbit the earth and then come back and land safely. Right. Like that's, that's in the horizon. Sure. In sure. the horizon, on the horizon. On the horizon. So I'm going to look this up real quick. What is your, what is your opinion? You said you had well, one. Well, no, there. no. The only thing I was going to say is I, I get that we were talking about like you were explaining to me before we started recording how I said, so I know he sent this car up into space and I get it. And like the, but, and you said the car is just going like first it's going to go near Mars and I know it's got cameras on it. And like, you can even, I heard you can even live stream it Mm -hmm. and uh, you could, so you're going to get to see Mars and then it's going to go to this asteroid belt and due to the laws of perpetual motion, which you guys aren't familiar with, that means if you set something into motion, it keeps moving unless something stops it. Uh, So the, the car is just going to keep flying through space. And which, by the way, just that whole idea is one of the most 80s things ever. Like, it might as well have been Michael J. Fox in a DeLorean with a pizza box and like a Ronald Reagan sticker, just like going through space. Mm-hmm. Like, it, which, and, and I'm all for that. But uh, it, it's kind of a harebrained, but it goes. And you said, we were like, what if, what if, I mean, it's obviously the, the dummies wearing a suit. And so it, from another spaceship, God forbid, you know, you would see it and it would look like, oh, there's a guy flying that ship and they would catch it and they'd find the chip and then find their way to us, made by humans on Earth. But you have to take something into consideration. One, how would they be able to read English? You know, they wouldn't understand our language. And two, what, how, if they could somehow interpret like graphics or something, they would, could read what is Earth to an alien and how would they know where the hell it is? I mean, maybe there's life out there that already knows. It's like, that's Earth. We don't go near Earth because they're a bunch of psychopaths. Oh, like they've been watching. And then they're going to be, oh, now they're shooting fucking cars at us. Damn it. This, this dummy looks stupid. That suit wouldn't fool anybody. We're littering in space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks a lot again, Earth. God. <laughs> put Earth on the no that's actually shit. Why is, that, they... is that a car? They put a car in space. Do, can we do something? Like, there's literally a, a, a dad alien and the mom's like, Henry, just sit down and like, eat your That's casserole. so fucking wasteful. It's like, look at that. I could have that car. I could have that car. But then they're like, yeah, they are like, they're like polluting space. Like, well, but it's an electric car. Oh, that's a little better. They, they sent a green lantern I hope it's from California. down to take care of it. And that's how the Hal Jordan thing happens. <laughs> <laughs> like, Stop yeah. littering in space. Yeah, yeah. So, no, and I get that it's, it's triumphant for sure, but it's just kind of ridiculous. That, that, I mean, think again, and, you know, every time the government does something, and, and, and when this is not a political anything, but anytime the government spends money on anything, somebody else gets mad and go, well, I could use that to feed star. How much do you think it costs to put that fucking car in space and send it just hurtling into an asteroid belt? Didn't Elon do that himself? Yeah, he, it was his car. From yeah, my understanding, but it was something his... somebody paid for, it cost money to build it or it would have sold for, I'm just saying, you could have easily given like 
two million dollars or whatever to like starving people and not send a fucking car going through space. But but whatever, you know, I I, I understand the symbolism of it. But yeah, somebody's that, gonna go. Is that really you know? Like I'm struggling to pay my fucking cable bill. You got a single mom working three jobs. You know. Meanwhile, there's this like Back to the Future DeLorean flying through space. You know, hoping to communicate with aliens. Well, I mean, to be to be fair, he did have to ask the government for permission before putting littering in space. <laughs> He did that. Yeah, they're go, so good at hey. taking care of things around here, yeah. you know. Why shouldn't they be in charge of space? He went. He went to the house and was like, "Can I? Can I just toss a car up there?" <clears throat> I will say they did a live feed for about eight hours. Yeah. While it was still like floating through space, I and saw every a now and then it. like it would, you know, the moon would go by or the yeah, Earth. Would go, yeah. yeah, you'd see the Earth, and that that was cool. It that was cool. really cool. Okay. Okay. No, I get it. it. Was, I just it's just <laughs> to me it's just kind of symbolic of like. How ridiculous the human race is that there's we just there's a car floating through space. I want to know why the car can have a live feed passing the moon and my Wi Fi cuts out when I go into the bathroom downstairs <laughs> at home. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think about it until just now. I'm angry now. Yeah. That's because yeah. you don't have the money. You don't have the money to pay for that feed. No, he installed like- Wi Fi on the spaceship going. Yeah, going it wasn't, it's literally, it's just a platform with a car sitting on it. And they is dropped it, it off. <clears throat> just, I mean, I, I believe there was a, a bursters on it, like because every now and then you would see something kind of like knocking it one direction or another. So there was some form of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not not like a rocket, but something that would propulsion? like propulsion. Yeah, like propulsion, like little bust of air that would kind of move it one way or another, so it wouldn't flip over or something like that. Sure. But then you know the feed cut. I think the last thing you saw was the whole Earth. Right behind it, and it cut out. Um, well, and it's it's just like with the Curiosity rover on Mars. You know, the fucking Curiosity rover is still tweeting from Mars. It just tweeted this crazy picture of like that canyon. Did you see it? I didn't see it. It's any. still driving around, sending us pictures and and updating like the Twitter feed. Has it feed. crossed any of the uh, monolithic bases over there yet? I, uh, probably not. Or, or they're controlling it. It's hanging out with them or something. You know, it's I'm like just, full on Martian now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you guys hear the the funny theory where it's like Elon Musk is a Martian that got stuck on Earth, and this whole time he's just been building his empire trying to get back home. I mean, it would make a lot more sense. He's than he, Capex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's Capex. <laughs> I would 100% believe that before I believe that he just, that guy came from the public school system. But Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Damn. What, me too? Oh. Bro, me too? <laughs> Look, you know, what up? I didn't get this fabulous fashion sense from private school. Anyway, but, but <clears throat> yeah, so there's this car hurtling through space. And like you said, how come we can launch a robot through like a tiny little window onto Mars like four years ago, and it's still tweeting and sending pictures, and now we've got a car going past it. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be great if the car landed and the robot got in the car and got hammered, and they like drove all over Mars and started a big fire or something like that, and then they're like, all right, see you later. Well, the, the rover goes. a car? Why would you need to put the car in a car? I think the rover's more like a tank with arms. I see, I feel like it's like the, the robot from Short Circuit. <laughs> This is actually one it's of the... It's a Wally. Look, guys, it's a Wally. Yeah, yeah Johnny Five. <laughs> this is one of the dichotomies with um, NASA and space Some and government spending today. that... <laughs> that was five <laughs> years ago. Um, <laughs> the, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> don't, really don't bugs choke me, on that giant vocabulary. <laughs> You've got going it really there. bugs me, though, because um, I sit there and I, I think about it as... Uh, the fact that we know more about space, that we figured out how to uh, circumnavigate the problems of getting into space with machinery and then people, and now we're like building a space station and there's ideas that people will soon be able to go to Mars. It's a one-way trip, but you'll be able to do that, yeah, yeah. that type of thing. That's all dope, and I know that a lot of good medical things and beneficial things have come from that research, so I don't want to poo-poo the whole thing. But what I don't get... Um, you guys can elaborate on this or leave it, but what I don't get is why that's all possible and all that time and money goes into that. <laughs> but we can't watch a fucking movie but trailer without it buffering. I can't watch a movie trailer without it buffering. I'm still diabetic. We don't know anything about what's in the ocean. We don't know how to measure when Yosemite's going to blow and we're all going to be cavemen again. Yeah. Like, we have all these things that we know are realities here. And people are doing the research. Uh, yeah. the, the diabetes thing, people say it's big pharmaceutical, but it doesn't explain the other three things, right? Sure. Those are all different problems that you go, how can we exit our planet and not have 
YouTube working in the bathroom figured out? Because here, well, first of all, with the ocean thing is they've, I'm pretty sure they haven't <clears throat> figured out how to put something that far down without it crumpling. I think the closest they've come to is James Cameron went and submerged himself I want to say... Was it Mariana Trench? They've been, he went they've down the Mariana been Trench. To the, they've definitely been to the bottom of the Mariana's Trench. Yeah, and there was nothing down there. Literally, it was just There nothing. were weird, weird life forms. It was like weird little specks that were moving. Maybe. But there's also those weird-ass worms. Well, there's also... And again, we're getting into weird sci-fi here, but there's also, theoretically, a prehistoric sea under... The bottom of the Mariana, the deepest part of the Marianas Trench is called like the Panthalesa Sea Floor or something. But there's supposedly a prehistoric sea below that that's heated with hydrothermal vents and blah 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 blah. Anyway, it could have dinosaurs swimming. That's in where it. the Leviathan is. Yeah, yeah, definitely, possibly the Megalodon Shark. I'm mm-hmm. still holding out for that one. I want, I want it to be true. You gotta love Hollow Earth theory. It works in the ocean too. <laughs> it totally does. I know, and they probably the Wi-Fi probably sucks there too. No, Elon God. made sure that it works. Because he's from the Hollow Earth. He's, yeah. he's actually, he's Atlantean. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, he's, 100%. You, like, yeah, have like Elon Musk and like Butch Walker and like maybe two other people. Johnny Keanu Dabber, Reeves. Keanu Reeves, <laughs> you know. Um, I got it right here. Let's see, March 2012. Got some, got some data for us over there. I want to say this is it. Deep Sea Challenger. I, there's a challenger joke in there somewhere, but I'm not going to say not gonna, it. We're not going to. Don't even. Whoa, do it. this is a family program. <laughs> is it? Nah, not really. <laughs> Deep Sea Challenger. It's also very impressive how original the names are for these machines that they launched. I feel like they'd pick it based on what looks good on the news. I'm I'm now wondering about like, like there's some guy that's like call it the destroyer of worlds. Yeah, no, like whoever named it the challenger, if it was a manned one, like would you want to be the dude that's getting inside the uh, metal and glass bubble that the someone challenger. named the challenger? Yeah, challenging because they don't know if it'll work. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. reach a certain depth and a a little uh, bolt just shoots across the way and you have two seconds. Yeah, dearest, <laughs> I love. And then just, I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> oh, oh damn it. You know, we'll never I could have had a V8. I didn't want to offend anyone. God. Casey, what uh, are you you got to definitely be careful not to offend anybody. Especially in 2018. Jesus. Oh, God. <clears throat> well, while you're looking that up, we'll talk about it. Let, let's say, let's go back to the thing. Uh, let's say that the car goes hurtling past Mars and they say hi to the rover and the rover tweets us a picture. Oh, of that'd it, be you know, Meanwhile, we can't watch it because our phones <laughs> won't load. You know, but it's live streaming all this fantastic galactical stuff. And let's say they do encounter another life form, like it gets picked up by a ship or something like that, and uh, which I love to think that like a, a some giant ship opens like a bay door and the car goes skidding into it and stops mm-hmm. like Back to the Future. And let's say they're able to interpret our signal and and they find us. Oh, there's there's people on Earth. Let's go let's go see them. The aliens come to Earth. What happens then? Well, if they're benevolent, which I, I honestly, I doubt, but I think our own species gives um, more credence to it being a 50-50 shot than 100 one way or the other. Right. But if they are benevolent, they show up purely curious, and it would take time, but they, they show up and they're going to pull an ET, just be super nice and like, hey, we're just curious, we, we're, we're neighbors now, blah, 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 and then they're going to be like, you know what, we should get the uh, world-ending laser beams ready because they'll see everyone freaking out about Armageddon and thinking that, you know, they are the Antichrist come in from Mars or some stupid crap like that. Sure. Ready to wreck us and World War Three breaks out because they came to say hi. Yeah. You guys are talking like aliens haven't already been here. Well, that is a fair point. He brought it up. They right, have right. Been let's here. assume let's assume there's no demonstrative proof of aliens so far, which is still subjective. Even but it is. Well <laughs> what thing- an ignorant <laughs> assumption. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The thing. If I had glasses, I'd be pushing them up right now. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> um, but, um, well, like Hunter said, w- if they're benevolent, and that's kind of the thing. I feel like I saw a video of Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about, they're like, well, you know, if you just play the odds, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but Google it, uh, the chances that we're the only sentient life in the universe is almost... It's it's almost insulting if you think that. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible, and the numbers are so <clears> overwhelmingly <throat> in favor that just another star the size of the sun 
with another planet, the distance of it from the Earth, that has an atmosphere where water is present. And which hydrogen, we know is real. We have one out there. They have measured tons of them, tons of them, and yeah, just the, but, the amount. And then one out of eleven, like, has water. And then one out of twenty of those, like, gets some type of life. And then not all life, but then one of fifty of those gets sentient life that can think. And then like one out of a hundred of those, the life becomes like self-aware like us. And that still seems like slim odds. But then when you multiply that by the size of the galaxy, it's like 50 other planets probably have a civilization thriving just like ours right now. So I, you, you gotta, like I said, Google it, but they, they asked Neil deGrasse Tyson about that. Life is almost certainly out there. And he said, and it's almost the worst idea ever for it to find us. Mm -hmm. And they're like, whoa, why? Because we, we have all these fantasies that like aliens are going to come down and we're going to be friends. And just the same reason that I want to see the basketball players shake hands at the end of the game after all these hard feelings, you know, like you want to feel like there's a happy ending. It's the native population syndrome, right? But they said that based on what we know about life in general, animal life, just life consumes <laughs> other life, uh, whether or not it's intentional, just whatever. But they said probably by the time something got here, it would not be here to help us along the way. Like, yeah, oh, we've showed really you how to make the perfect pot roast. It would be like, we're here to fucking farm you, you know? Yeah, when you move in, you wipe out the indigenous population. Here's my it's biggest problem with that whole theory, is that when you look in a telescope and you see <clears> a, <throat> a star that's similar to our star, and you see a planet that's similar to our planet in the same distance, it's millions of light years away. Meaning that what we're looking at is millions of years old. And by the time that anybody reached it, it could be gone. Not well, only that, that, but you true. constantly have these planets that people are like, well, on this planet, it rains ice sideways. And on this planet, there's, there's lava that's like the whole you know, ocean is made half of lava. They don't know. There's no way they know. There's no way that telescope tells them that much. They're just pulling. I mean, next it's going to be like <laughs> in the core of this this planet. There's Happy Meals just floating around. <laughs> boxes on this of planet, Happy all meals. the toilet seats fall down I've all the time. I've that before. Like, it's dangerous you, to piss. How, how do you know? How do they know? I mean, yeah, they can see planets in distant solar systems with massive telescopes. And I might be I'm I may be sounding incredibly ignorant right now, but how in the world do they know that planet? It rains sideways. See, I don't think they can know outside of the Milky Way. Within the Milky Way, I think they have satellites and Hubble and everything else. Like, they can actually see the surface of Jupiter and see the uh, Earth-sized hurricanes happening there and stuff. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think we've ever had confirmed that even, like, planet counting and stars and everything else that they can see. And they can see other galaxies. Those pictures are up online. Yeah. You can see them, but it's like a huge top-down distant Thing. I don't think they can actually zero in. And I think they? probably a lot of it's maybe deductive reason. <clears throat> they assume that we can view uh, 63 planets or something and really examine the weather. And based on the trends you see, like one out of every five has this. And they would assume that those trends probably repeat throughout the universe, which is a leap of faith, granted. But maybe they start to see things that, like, for instance, before you zoom in on Jupiter, if, like, <laughs> if the hurricane looks like a giant butthole, or something, <laughs> and they go, huh, we're, we're going to explore planet Zorglon 12, and then as they're zooming in, they also see a giant butt. Oh, that's probably Hurricane, you know? Maybe. 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 <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. It could be a fucking massive toaster oven, for all I know, you know? <laughs> Which I, I kind of like that. That's, that's sort of a space fantasy of mine, is that the, the further you get out in the universe, it's just filled with all kinds of recyclable junk, you know? <laughs> as, <laughs> like, as seen on TV ads. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and like, like uh, it's a whole planet of just like toasters and VCRs and stuff. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's just it it blows my mind that they come out. I mean, I know they say it because it gets people riled up <clears throat> and interested in space, but there's no way they can know. There's no way, and that also I mean, goes back to it's like you know Titan. I think it's I can't remember what else. It's like Titan B or Titan A or something like that, which was the Earth-like planet they found. Yeah, but it's what they're looking at through a telescope is so old that even if they had the ability to travel there, there's no way that it would look like that. That's a great point. I haven't mm -hmm. seen anybody that really addressed that yet. I'm sure that's there's true. maybe somebody that has, but you got a great point. All we've really proved is that there was a planet 80 million light years ago that kind of looked like Earth and might have been like Earth. And I mean, you could find a planet that's Earth-like that's 80 light years away. Yeah. Look how far we've come in 80 years. That might not be the same planet. Anymore. Well, there's something to be said there for like travel too. You know, like if you're actually going to move through space, if you're ever really going to get anywhere significant, like you're going to have to find a way to go 
way faster than the speed of light, or you're going to die before you get there. They say that's the biggest problem with most manned space flights. Even if you could keep people alive their whole life, they wouldn't even make it like to Pluto or something. You know what I mean? No matter, yeah. you'd have to get something that I don't even know if you can do it with speed. I think you probably have to do it with like teleportation or something. And just to go back, I don't mean to sidetrack here, <clears throat> but I just want to, you know, for the audience who are probably losing their <coughs> minds about the James Cameron thing. Oh yeah, let's get into that. He did go Challenger Deep was the name of the deepest part of the Mariana Trench. So I sound pretty stupid thinking that's what he called the ship. Um, but they did go 35,787 feet to the bottom of the Challenger Deep, okay. which is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench. Okay. Which God knows. It, well, it doesn't say miles because it just says meters, and after that it gives me the middle finger. Yeah. As any good article should. Yeah. Um, so that's that's that that's the end of that. Man, this this is like kind of off topic. There's a great great horror novel uh, written by Nick Cutter, which I believe is a uh, that's a that's a pen name or that's like a second name for a different author. You have to look it up. It's the guy that wrote The Troop. <clears throat> he also wrote one called The Deep, and uh, it all takes place at this like weird station that's been down at the bottom of like down at the bottom of the Challenger Deep, and they all of a sudden stopped. Uh, receiving transmissions from there, and they have to send somebody down to tell what's going on, and things have gotten weird. Is this a movie? It's a book. And what's it called? The Deep. The Deep. Yeah, I believe that's it. The Deep. The Troop, The Deep. Read anything by Nick Cutter. It's crazy. I'm looking that up. Yeah, I'm looking that up. I would like to, on the... On the topic of... um, We we brushed this aside at the beginning, the idea of whether or not it would be good to be found by alien life and whether or not it was a good idea to send a car out into space and all that. Um, we, we already know that they're like in time capsules sent out into space that have like recordings of Reagan and, and like music and stuff like that, like sure. Earth's history. That's going to go over real um, well. That's what I'm saying. Um, the, uh, the, the brilliant mind of the fictional Dr. Ian Malcolm has said... Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. I don't want... I love expansive thought. I love, um, I love um, pushing the envelope. Um, um, <laughs> I'm, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Christian that believes in um, evolution and the Bible and believes in predestination and free will and thinks that all four of those can easily coexist without a problem, which is a topic for another time. But just to illustrate, I love expansive thought and push and stuff. But sometimes, very rarely, and this is one of those cases, um, I kind of, I kind of, and with the caveat that good things came from NASA again, like earlier, but I kind of look at our whole space exploring thing and go, was that ever a good idea. Like I know nationalism and like beat Russia to it and um, national morale was a big part of that. But um, in hindsight, hindsight is totally 2020, but maybe we could have been like, you know, let the Ruskies have that one. And uh, well, and, and um, it's not, not about uh, it. this doesn't necessarily speak to the Elon Musk phenomenon, but they've been defunding NASA for a long time. And there's been sort of like a movement um, of just people that will, will, and again, this is not supposed to be a political uh, episode, but people are sick of like all that money being funneled into like, like there's so many problems here mm-hmm. and the money is so, we're so in debt. It's getting worse. The bubble's going to burst. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't stimulate. The only way they stimulate the economy is by pumping fake money into it. Well, that eventually, like the housing bubble in 2008, that eventually busts. Yeah. So people don't want to see like, we've allocated $23 million or $23 billion to NASA so that we can put another trash can on the moon. They're like, how's about we fix the fucking potholes in our, you know what I mean? Or what about we, people are very sensitive about what their tax money goes to. I think why not keep NASA around within a uh, scientific yeah. um, component because they're brilliant minds and, and they well, come and up with wonderful things. it's very impressive. Like this thing that just happened, well, again, this was the private sector though. So right. that kind of opens up another yeah. big, uh, thing about look at that's what you can get well like government like government like nasa is like government peanut butter and mm-hmm. elon musk is like you know whatever like a, a flourishing company he's like really check it out 
you know, so that I think that there's a cool discussion there too, and it's not necessarily like you can't defund Elon Musk, obviously. Well, what's but. really funny is you have the guy who the CEO of Boeing, who's <clears> like, <throat> "We're gonna beat Tesla and Elon Musk to, to Mars. We're gonna beat him to Mars," as like some like big call out, and Elon Musk went, "Do it! I would awesome, please. Yeah, if you could, I'm all for it because I want to get to Mars one way or another. If you beat me to it." I'm all for a space race. If you win, congratulations. I just want to get there. Hey, isn't, the, isn't the Virgin <laughs> Records guy supposed to be – who's that guy? That, that, he's uh, like that super rich. Yeah. Uh, super he's rich. already selling tickets to uh, – I don't know if that Is that the dude gonna... doing the one-way ticket to Mars? Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Terrible idea. If you're thinking about doing it, fellow humans, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Let's hear more about that, Hunter. Come, Please, give, God, no. Give us your opinion. You know, there was a, uh, I don't know if we're allowed to mention it. Uh, if, if we get sued for this, I apologize. But uh, the, another podcast. You'll be suing Spencer, not Casey or Hunter. <laughs> Thank, thanks for that. <laughs> um, um, the, on the Joe Rogan podcast, they were talking about people that want to buy that one-way ticket to Mars. And he goes, you realize that's, that's got to be somebody that has nothing to live for. He goes, do you have any idea how bad it's going to suck on Mars? He goes, you ever go out into the desert with your friend and your friend's drunk and you can't get him out and you just, you're out there for like hours and hours and it's cold and it sucks. He goes, Mars is going to suck way worse than that. And you're going to die there. Do you, who's going to sign up? Well, here's for the that? thing. You go I'd to Mars, it. you go to Mars. That's lo- the ultimate hold my beer experience. It is. I, would, oh I would do it in a heartbeat. No, if they, if no. they said, we can get you there safely, feet on the ground, but that's where you're going to die. Done. You, why would you do that? For the experience. Are you kidding me? To be what? the first one on Mars? What ex- the, be the first one also to die on Mars about a bunch of rocks? How are you going to tell anybody about it? It would be so... It would be the experience of a there lifetime. There would be no cool shows. I don't give no a shit. good food. You'd don't be eating a out shit. of a. You'd be eating just pureed crap out of a bag. The rest just of no, to be actually, able to travel in space would be phenomenal for me. I love... The idea and just I love it. I love everything about space. I'm a huge space nerd. I would love it. I'd eat it up, I and then I would like, sit there. I would get to Mars and I'd pout. I feel like for an in about an hour that shit would wear off, and you'd go, "Oh my god, this is like you." Oh, there. panic would set in immediately. I'm not Absolutely. saying panic. I think you'd be like, "Fuck it, I am on Mars," and okay, what now? And it'd be like seventy you years know, later. Look, you know, you're not. I'm not going to go to Mars and sit in a tent. Like, there's going to be stuff that... You're like, I'm going to walk around. I'm no, going to get cold. Like, there's there's jobs and aspects of it. Like, you're going to go and you're going to actually, like, explore, send back data, take, you know, there's... It's not just I'm going to arrive to Mars and be like, well, this is my home now, and then die. Wouldn't like, it be weird? Wouldn't there's it be weird a if job were, to do there. Wouldn't it be weird if they were teaching us to do those jobs by, by giving us things like Instagram, Snapchat? Oh, like, like Mr. Miyagi? Like, like you get there and they're like... Quick, send Instagram photo. Think about it. Okay, so we're all walking around with this fucking recording device, this little movie studio, mm-hmm. and we're constantly taking pictures and putting them like he's holding his cell them. phone for those of you. That I'm holding can't my see. cell phone up. <laughs> what if that? What if that's all just like a weird, like benign training, so that we, that we can send people randomly? Go all right now, Snapchat everything on Mars and <laughs> think what a complete man. Yeah. Okay, I want to play this scenario out for you, Casey, as your friend. Let's listen to this real quick. I'm really um, I'm so huge, I'm excited. I'm huge, huge uh, um, um, possible stretch here, but we're going to assume that at some point you're doing this, you somehow don't go insane, and you even have like four or five other humans that are with you, and you guys are good friends, but you've read everything, no, you've seen fuck every those movie. those guys. I don't care about those guys. Um, you actually have good food. You have all this stuff. You also have Elon Musk Wi-Fi, so you can broadcast back to Earth, no problem. This is what happens. Sounding better and At better. At some point during all of this, we discover that there are aliens there or aliens show up, and they're like, yo, the moon was one thing. Earth is your planet. This is not okay. All of a sudden, we get a broadcast and it's from your chest up, and there's like this weird green three-fingered hand that has no thumb, and it it points to you, and then points behind the camera, and you see like a like a cardboard slate or something scoot in front, and you start crying, and you hear like a weird croak or crackle, and then you're reading their their. This is going to be insensitive. I don't mean this in an insensitive way. This is possible technically. I'm ready. You read their terrorist demands where they're holding Earth hostage or you hostage, and what you're having to relay back to us is like... Weird 
crap like that. Like that wasn't that wasn't audio messing up. That was literally what Hunter just did. No, the aliens scrambled it. I thought that it was impressive. He's, yeah, he that sounded like. And an you know what? Language. I'd be the first one to have that <laughs> but done you, to me. Of course you would. <laughs> I'd be the first he just wants one. I'd take first. It. No, oh, it's not no. even being the first. It's just like you show up to Mars. Aliens are like, we're taking you hostage. It's like, all right. I mean, I kind of knew the risk coming out here. <laughs> Roll the dice. I got snake eyes. Now I'm going to get, you know, probed by aliens. Casey's just okay with kill it. Me. You've heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Casey is okay with it. <laughs> Dude, I'm no. okay with it. That's a disturbing amount of complacency. Shit. <laughs> I'm, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, the people here suck, and so Mars can't be any worse. That's terrible logic. <laughs> that the the people that we've seen suck. Imagine how bad the things we haven't seen <coughs> might suck. To say that, like, eh, Mars couldn't be any worse than this. What if? Yeah, no, it could. Like, maybe, maybe in a previous life, I was one of those. Um, what are they? The people that would like travel through South Africa or South America to make the maps for. Uh, British colonials. What were those people called? Uh, explorers. Cartographers. Cartographers. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'm. Maybe in a past life I was a cartographer and I just love exploring and just want to see new things. Maybe that's it. Or maybe you've got Tweety Birds swimming around your head. Yeah. <laughs> because you gotta, if you think things suck around it, like, give me an example. Let, let's, let's play this out. Give me an example of something in the last year that sucked. What? No. Anything. What sucks on earth? What sucks on Earth? Just one thing. Oh, I mean, constantly, every day, I'm proving that people suck. But, like, more but, specific. But why? <laughs> give an example. There's too many. What do you mean, give an example? Pick one. Yeah, but what is that? Yeah, First that thing just, that comes to mind, pick yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. What, what's, what has sucked for you in the last year? Nothing is bad enough to make me go to Mars. No, don't. Now, just come on. <laughs> what I was going to say, I was trying to get him to go, well, this one time, this guy told me to go fuck myself or something. And I go, okay, okay. Well, I'm sorry, Casey. That picture that. that picture that, good. but with no oxygen. <laughs> You know, and not a city and there's not a refrigerator or a video game or like a place to go I back understand. to. I understand. I understand. Picture whatever sucks here on Mars in a terrible, nasty, rocky, desolate field with no oxygen I and low temperatures and just probably, a, it probably smells like farts too. I just imagine that. But. I understand that all the luxuries of Earth that I have that's going great for me here are not on Mars. I completely get that. None of my friends, none of my family are on Mars. Totally, I I 100% understand it. I still would want to go. Okay. In the experience. You know, okay. it's ex- we appreciate it's your honesty. Final, final test of this, and your decision will be the end of this because we don't need to like make it the grill Casey on his Martian aspirations thing. But let's say that none of the kidnapping, weird, like clicky voice stuff happens. You get there... You actually coexist with the Martians, and everything's okay, and there's like an Earth colony, and it's a peaceful coexistence. You now are forever stuck in Martian retail and ignorant Martian customer service whining. You That's really the rest think, of your existence. You really think that if I found and coexisted with Martians, another other beings on another planet, that the first thing they would do is go... Let's stick him as a sticker boy at Walmart. No, I'm just saying, like, that's that's your eventuality, though. Like, you have to, if if that's the case, no amount of one extra pump of chocolate, stir it, and hand it back at Joe Muggs is going to work with the Martians. Are you still... So wait a minute, you're, you're, you're trying to talk me out. No, I'm just wondering if that is going to be the tipping point. Cause we've given you extreme examples. What if it's something as mundane I as doubt that I'd go to Mars and become a customer service rep. I do too. But I'm just saying if you do go and you are in customer service and you have mundane customer service bullshit. What are you talking about? It's another you, planet. They probably don't even have the same concept of you're customer not, service. you're not going with this example. Assume that it somehow is. I'm not going to assume shit. You need to for this example, though. Are you still okay with it? Yeah, I'd still go. That's the end of that. It's because it would be <laughs> it, even even if it was horrible customer service experience, like I've had plenty of here. It would still be on a different planet, and not a lot of people could say, see, I "Hey, I put my feet <laughs> on a different planet." See, I don't, I don't think you're thinking about it. So, like, like it's easy oh, to I'm sit totally here. Not. I'm, it's this is like a twenty-five percent this... thought process, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> well, that's big of you to admit that. Like, and it just, it like, it's easy to sit here in this room and go, "I totally like to explore new frontiers." I like to go to Mars. I'm afraid of heights. What do you think? Of course, I'm not actually. Gonna what do I'm saying it, is, have you ever just to. like 
gone a little too far out in the ocean. You know, have you ever just walked I get seasick? Have you have you <laughs> just walked off into the woods a little too far ever? Like stuff starts to get creepy before the you... the lake at Concord. As soon as wait, your feet wait. don't touch. To be, uh-huh. to be fair, I've gotten lost in the woods before, and the 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 aspect of being lost is creepy. However, the idea of being somewhere like new that I've never been before was still kind of interesting in my tremendously mind. exciting. I agree. I agree with that. That's, I was like, I've that, never seen this place before. I don't know how to get home. I'm assuming I can just walk the same direction I came and hopefully sure, find something sure. I remember. I just my whole point is that the the, the amount of uh, uh, external factors that come into just like exploring the ocean or uh, even just going to the moon and back are just tremendous and your like odds of you dying are super high. Like to go and live on Mars, even if you had like an Instagram job or whatever. Just the risk involved in that, the risk versus reward to me just seems but so that's, off. That's the whole kilter. point. You're going to Mars knowing that that's your final resting place. <laughs> You've got to make peace with it before you leave. That's, you might not even make it off the planet. The rocket might go up and just break apart. Just melt asshole. Yeah. Now I get it. I get and that's and that exact that exact fact. That's why I can't believe there's one fucking seat filled on this crazy ship. <laughs> and it's like, with my ass. And it, it will be. And and that's another thing too. When people like people go, well, it couldn't suck. It's it's probably sucks up there less than it sucks down here. Well, I know people think things suck down here, and I agree most of the time. But my point, like people was like, oh damn it, I didn't like the way the election went. Yeah, yeah, but you liked it a little more when you had Netflix and a box of ding dongs. You yeah. know, like <laughs> you were okay when you can fucking order. Uber Eats, you know what I mean? When you could sit on your butt and like catch up on a show and somebody will bring you dinner and like, that's great. And it, you, you certainly hate the world a little bit less when you have all of our comforts here. Like you're up there and customer service gets rough and they're gonna be like, damn it, I guess I'll throw this rock again. So to actually, uh, kind of give this a, a nice book in and bring it around to something we stated earlier. What uh, we didn't really dive too far into it. What aspect or aspects of ancient astronaut theory do you buy into or find interesting? Because we're all talking future and now, but you brought up that like our initial. You um, mean like what ancient alien? Yeah, that do I stuff. Believe? Our initial idea um, presupposed that aliens weren't here, which I don't actually subscribe to. But that was the first idea. So subscribing to they were here. What what do you think of that stuff? Before I do that, I just want to go back and tell you guys the Virgin Airline guy is Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Just a, yeah. you know, for do the people the human who are losing their minds and, um, for a second time list. this episode. <laughs> Richard, if you're listening, don't fucking do this, man. <laughs> Seriously, customer service is going to be way worse on Mars because there's no <laughs> Netflix. Because then you Mr. don't know Branson, what they want. <laughs> Mr. Branson, don't listen to these assholes. Give me a ticket. <laughs> I want to go, and I want to go now. By the way, if Richard Branson is listening, we would be willing to debate this live on any one of, of your course, y- yes. any one of your businesses or outlets for uh, you know the right price. Just give us a call. <laughs> Actually, I mean, we could do the first podcast on Mars. Let's just. You guys want to go? Oh, now, now I'm now in. it's your turn. Now I'm fucking <laughs> to in. get out. Now I'm in. No, no. no. Like, I was like, no way. And he's like, we could do a podcast there. And I'm like, let's pack everything up. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. You guys aren't moving. Yeah. I'm going to need to stop for coffee, but ancient well, aliens, but, um, not the TV there's show. There's too concept. much. I mean, there's not a lot that like I can just name off the top of my head other than like depictions of angels, um, f- flying people in other, you know, civilizations mm-hmm. where you have these weird oblong rounded heads like with hieroglyphics like, and stuff. hieroglyphics yeah. with like tubes coming out. Sure. I mean, there's, there's wall paintings of like metal boxes with buttons. I don't mm-hmm. know why, how I could, you know, you could depict their metal, but it's like gray paint, a lot of buttons, someone's controlling it. And they're like, that was our God. And it just, it's, it's mind blowing to think that the people were like smoking that much PCP back then and just hallucinating the shit. Like there, there's, there's gotta be some truth to it that they <laughs> were literally seeing somebody do this. There's that, that vertical carving that I think is of a God. I can't remember what culture it is somewhere in South America. I think where when looked at from a horizontal standpoint, it then resembles a guy from the side in like a cockpit. With yeah. like with pedals that he's like bicycling the spaceship somehow, but he's in yeah. a cockpit. He's got the helmet sure. and the the alien engineer breathing tube going in and all that. Yeah. Oh, it's just like <clears throat> you have also. I mean, there's a theory that 
there was a civilization on Earth that coexisted with the dinosaurs or before the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's documentaries that you can find where they found tools, like well advanced tools I don't, that are like millions I of years old. I don't think that they've. I, I could be wrong about this, but I don't think they've found anything that predated dinosaurs. Because back then, the whole atmosphere was different. I think that they found things that predated known humanoid civilization. Like, for instance, there's all these evidence, uh, there's all this evidence of uh, a species of things that lived here in North America way before the Native Americans, way before Indians, way before Eskimo. If you, if you believe people came over the polar land bridge or whatever, and then that, those became the American Indians, whatever. I mean, they've proven that basically all life came from the Fertile Crescent which is probably the Garden of Eden if, yeah. in, in scripture, whatever, <clears throat> whatever parallels you draw. But they have found evidence of something that lived here in North America before the Indians. And they were called the moon eyed people and they were really tall and they had real pale skin and big eyes. And they kind of almost fit the, the gray. The, the, yeah. Like the typical Ish. alien thing. And, um, and they had crazy tools, uh, diamond things that would have had to been cut by diamonds and these little discs, and they still find them in barrel mounds all over North America. And they had like uh, mines where they were mining ore and metals and building, and they had runways and all kinds of crazy shit, you know. And they right. and they are in Indian lore. That's a crazy thing. Old Indian lore and myths. They talk about these people, and a lot of times the Indians had to fight them to take over the land. Eventually, the aliens got them. Apparently, pushed them out of North America. But there's, there's some people say that has to do with the lost colony of Roanoke and I don't know, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think they found them like back in like the Cretaceous period. I think most of this, the stuff that you find was like millions of years ago, but not like 500 million years ago. Right. I just, that right there to me screams that, I mean, what's to say that this civilization of moon eyed people weren't incredibly advanced, more well off than we were? Sure. They probably were. You know, and they they took off, or got the fuck beat out by the Indians. That, yeah, which apparently were a pretty scrappy bunch. They beat the Vikings in yeah. like fourteen something. They had Carl Urban though. That's no, true. Shit, I got to be. Oh my God, no, I'm shit. sorry. Get get out, get out of here. <laughs> you just got kicked off another podcast <laughs> every time. Quit turning it. Quit turning our conversations into shitty movies. Casey hates Daredevil. <laughs> and Pathfinder. <laughs> so much hate. But yeah, there's God. there's I, I I I totally agree. There's there's a lot of evidence of possible preoccupation of this planet before like the primitive people that we came from. And or, they also seem a lot more advanced than we are. I don't know, I wanna say they're more advanced than we are now, but sure. the fact that that long ago, they had the tools and capabilities to do the things they did. Sure, I there's just there's no doubt in my mind that ancient civilizations before Indians existed at a, at an advanced capacity. Well, in support of that, actually, Joe Rogan has a, a number of podcasts with these uh, two. I can't remember what type of scientists they are, but these two. Doctors, basically. Paleontology, maybe? I don't think they're paleontologists, okay. but they, they dabble in that if they aren't. Okay. But um, in watching those, supporting your idea that actually there might be humans that predate or coexisted with dinosaurs, or if not that, were super, like you were saying, before anything we know, and could also be super advanced, uh, one of them was talking about uh, epochs and... Um, cataclysmic events, and most people point to the 65 million year ago one is like the last great one, and he was like, there's been, I think he said there's been like one since then, and there were a couple before that or something, and he pointed to the soil where they could measure it and they could tell the same thing happened here, here, and here. So it 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 uh, uh, described some grand cataclysm that r erased everything that was there and then uh, civilization started over. So his thing was, where most modern science looks at the beginning of modern civilization, um, a few like thirty thousand years ago, or even a hundred thousand years sure, ago, sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> that stuff. He says, you know, to be fair to them, it looks like the beginning. But if you look at where they're starting from and compare that to what we know came before, what it really looks like is something ended, and this is the people crawling out of the rubble, having to start over. 
and in regards to the superior technology thing, they may, <coughs> excuse me, have been more advanced than we are and far more advanced because he also stated that um, the way that nature degrades things and stuff, if man just left a city and never went back, he said it, I can't remember, I'm paraphrasing big time now, but it would be maybe one or 200 years tops and all that stuff would be dissolved in dust again, including steel and everything else. Right. It would be the rubble that you like your boots crunched down on. You'd never know it was a building. Like that's just how it was. That's why the, the pyramids and the Sphinx, I think are like the only things. And then that city they found underground, like unless you use actual massive sized earth that's well structured, it will not stand the test of time. Well, they also, I mean, there's theories or statements. I don't know if they've <clears throat> proven it to be real or not, that the head of the Sphinx was added to it. Like, that was a monument. It had a different head on it. And when they uncovered it, found the body of the lion, put a different head on top. Whoa. And, yeah, he like, sculpted about that. a new head and put it on top. Holy shit. I so, could le- read on that. That's crazy. You should. It, it looks That's a lot nuts. like it. Like well, the, and here's, and, they, and you talk about like like the legend of Atlantis, which is almost certainly not a legend, but, but because it's in, it's found cross platform in so many different cultures and their history. And uh, even the, the, and I've talked, you know, whatever, the, the, the ancient Greek philosophers used to talk about Atlantis, like, not like, yeah, in this uh, incredible, uh, I'll use this amazing metaphor about this place called, the, they're like, no, like last week when I was in Atlantis, I talked to this guy, <laughs> like they talk about like some real thing. Um, <clears throat> but even beyond that, wouldn't it be interesting if these civilizations, these predated civilizations, like one of the reasons that you don't find any, like the fossil record mm-hmm. does, because the one thing that doesn't crumble over time is organic material, like bones of people. Or whatever the, the people had to have had some sort of a biochemical makeup like a dinosaur. Yeah. We still find those all the time. So why don't we have any rec- how, why don't we have any evidence of these civilizations? What if because the civilization was so advanced and maybe they're more like us than we think, and what happens is they're hell bent on their own destruction. The reason we have no record of them is because they kill each other. Like fucking technology goes crazy, bomb goes off, something like that, and they're just wiped out. And maybe it, like that's almost like a cautionary tale, right? Mm-hmm. And that just shows that the more advanced we get, the crazier we get, and like somewhere in there, there's got to be like something's got to change. Well, it could be also that the flood. I mean, the flood that's in the Bible is depicted in several <clears throat> other civilizations as well, right? True. So it could be that they, most of them, were taken out, or their you know burials were washed out by that, and so. And it's still the buried bones. at the bottom of the sea where yeah. we haven't explored, and because we're sending a car. Past it's buried Mars. in that sea. Under yeah, the we're sea. sending a car to Mars, <laughs> but we still don't. We also yeah. don't know seventy percent of what's in the ocean. That's true. Well, guys, I got to say, this has been a very fascinating conversation. I mm-hmm. think we've touched on a lot of uh, real interesting. I don't things know what here. to call this episode. Uh, we'll just call this episode "Space," and yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, on Elon Musk, space on Elon <laughs> Musk. <laughs> Yeah. No, we'll great. just call it Casey Goes to Mars. Casey Goes oh, that's to Mars. title. That's Casey a, Goes to Mars. We got it. We got it, folks. And just for the record, every, we, we really hope Casey doesn't go to Mars. Um, I want to go so bad. God, we'll hold him down, don't Jesus worry. Jesus Christ. All right, everybody, listen, we're signing off here. Uh, thanks again for tuning into the Beacon House podcast. Please check us out on social media. Tell a friend about it. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, again, thanks for listening. My name is Spencer McCoy. Casey Bishop. Hunter Barnhart. All right, we'll see you guys later. Love you. Oh, my.